Uh, spoiler alert. Doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I had it working last night, um, but my uh, my projector is knackered. Um, and on, on top of that, uh, I never actually managed to get the emulator running on the hardware. I wanted to get it running on a virtual machine on my Mac, um, but I've yet to get it working on the Pi. So, if anyone wants to, if anyone is interested in getting the emulators running on the Pi's, I'd love to talk to them. Um, uh, anyway, I'll crack on. Right. So, it was a, it was the first thing I thought of when uh, when I when I heard about the, the Raspberry Pi. Um, or at least when it arrived in the post, the first thing I thought of was how amazing this is going to be to get it to schools and get kids passionate about, about computing again like I was when I was a nipper. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to talk about today, um, why I did it, uh, the hardware, the software, the front end which I'm, I'm planning to do for it, and what I've yet to do. So, why I did it. To start with, I just wanted something that achievable, something that I, I could do myself, and that, you know, I, uh, with a little bit of googling, what, what have you, I could get it, get it all running myself. Um, I love video games. I miss my Super Nintendo. <laughs> this little fella used to work when I was 12. <laughs> This was the best thing in my life, and it stopped working about five, six years ago when I was at uni. It's already got like beer spilled in it or ash in the, in the console or something like that, I don't know. It doesn't work anymore, and I miss it. And it means I could get to play Mario Kart anywhere. <laughs> it's a fully portable Super Mario Kart machine. Right, so the hardware. Obviously a Raspberry Pi, I've got a Model B Raspberry Pi. My Super Nintendo, uh, a little Optoma projector, which I would love to say is great, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it was great up until a couple of days ago when it started getting these little white dots on the thing, and now there's loads of them. Um, SNES to USB adapter, which was a little lead I bought on eBay for I think about five or six quid. This, the um, emergency phone charger, which it sounds like everyone seems to have one of these, they're brilliant for portable pies. And, uh, and the Logitech K400 uh, wireless keyboard, which just plug it in, worked out the box, got a little trackpad on the end, it's brilliant, it's full size. No, it's a silly little keyboard, so. <laughs> oh, and a tiny, tiny little speaker as well to go in it. Right, so I'm. I'm a UI guy. I've, I've been um, I've been making websites since the '90s. I work for a finance company now, um, but uh, you know I'm not I'm not a programmer. Um, I'm a designer, and you know I am in, really into data or into metadata and into efficiency. But Linux is not really my bag, so it's been it's been a learning curve. It's been brilliant. Um, so these are the things that I've. I've been using to get it going. Debian Squeeze, um, can't wait to try the, try the new Raspbian version. Because um, I was running it off, uh, off this thing, because I was using this as the projector, it was the, uh, it was the composite. And the, the Debian Squeeze didn't have uh, the sound uh, architecture, it only works if you use HDMI. So I had to install that and um, a bunch of like, dependencies. Then an emulator called FCE Ultra. Um, there's a few SNES emulators out there, um, but this was the one that I managed to get working on my virtual machine. Hence, thought that I could get it working on on the Pi. Unfortunately, not. Um, some ROMs, which um, some legal stuff I should probably mention. <laughs> um, and anyway, there's a guy out, out there on the forums called Toad King who's uh, managed to get. Um, get it working at full speed. There's another guy on YouTube, I've seen him playing Mario Kart Bastard at full speed. <laughs> um, with a, with, a, with a, a controller that he's actually um, wired straight into the GPIO ports, which is interesting. Uh, I'm going to just desolder this little connector and plug it into the back of this one. Um, haven't ever soldered before, but I'll give it a go. Um, uh, and the next, my next software project is going to be, well, once I've got the emulator running and everything like that, um, I'm going to start hacking around with um, 
some kind of UI. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch of things out there. Advanced MAME seems to look quite popular, and there's quite a big community out there for it. So I'm going to give that a go. Um, this is a kind of a bit of a mock-up of um, everything I've, that I've got going at the moment. Um, the observant ones of you all have noticed that this is not a Super Nintendo game, it is a NES game. Um, and that, but I did that because I wanted to kind of show how I would uh, illustrate which buttons were what. Um, so these are sort of like the NES buttons on a Super Nintendo pad. And then I've chosen to put the designer's name down there because I don't think game designers get nearly enough respect that they should do. Um, the publisher, which get all the respect and don't be deserved, but I don't know anyway. How many players it is, how big the ROM is, and who ported it, so who ripped the, the it onto uh, um, and the year. You have 1956 on that, so. Big one? And the year. Oh, and the year, sorry, the year it was published, of course. Um, right, so what I've still got to do, the front end, um, uh, I've got also other performance issues on the on the virtual machine, and then once I've got it running at a decent speed, I'll then work out how to get it working on the Pi. Um, I need to uh, need to once once I've actually worked out the hardware bit of this, I then need to actually get the pad working. Um, and apparently, that's not going to that's, that's that's fairly straightforward, or so it seems. Um, Add a USB hub to it because I'll then run out of USB ports, and the plan is to also get um, movies, but essentially do like um, uh, like the uh, Raspberry MC or uh, what's the other one? Open Elec, is it? So so make like a, a UI to like browse all your movies and music and all that kind of stuff as well as games. Um, add a little speaker to it. Integrate the SNES to USB adapter. And then wire up a power switch so that I can actually turn it on and off using that thing. Um, and then extend all the other ports so that I haven't got to use my special screwdriver. <laughs> it shapes like a flower. <laughs> Very weird, but it's Nintendo. Um, so I'd really love to have some, some help with this. Um, if anybody can help me out with the emulator performance, I, I just started chatting to a chap over there about emulators, so look forward to that conversation. Um, the front end. Um, if anybody's got any interested in um, arcade interfaces, doing that kind of stuff, I'd love to talk to you. Um, and anybody who wants to sort of teach me how to solder or stuff like that, because I said I've never done it before, and, you know, maybe on a Saturday or something like that. Anyway, that's the lot. Thanks for listening, and um, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, next month uh, I'll have a working system for you. But anyway, thanks very much. Yeah. Cheers. Cool. Well, we get our next three speakers lined up. And this is going to be tricky because we're going to have three...